you're going to go in and uh, negotiate for more money or whatever, and you're going to bargain your position, right? It's going to say, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to going to leave. Well, you better be ready to leave, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, an old, I guess, project manager of mine, he made a comment, which is, is somewhat relatable to a couple of different positions, but he said, if you're going to go in and uh, negotiate for more money or whatever, and you're going to bargain your position, right? It's going to say, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to going to leave. Well, you better be ready to leave, right? Because they may say no. And so I guess it's kind of a similar situation, right? You applied, you have to have some expectation you might get it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that other question though. You might, I think that you, you kind of still leading me into a question and, and I'll ask it to myself. You, did I bargain? Yeah. Was there some negotiations, right? Was there yeah. some, you know, did you, well, I guess, you know, we'll get a little bit more, more detailed. So what was that process as far as negotiating with both your, I guess your future employer, right? As well as your current employer, right? So maybe you went to your current employer before you started looking and you said, Hey, you know, I'm wanting more money. I think I'm below market value, my salary or whatever. Yeah. Then maybe you started looking and then you get an offer and then you kind of you know, do you go back to your current employer and say, Hey, I was getting an offer. I'd like to give you the chance to, you know, kind of negotiate our terms or move the process along. Maybe you're in the kind of yeah. the midst of a promotion or something and you give them the chance, you know, or maybe none of that happened. So like, what was, I guess, what was your, I guess, situation? Yeah. So I started the process with my current employer about eight months ago. Okay. So. So I switched into a new role. I kept my title and uh, my, I was just kept at the same level, but I did change my responsibilities. And I, I kind of communicated, hey, I understand if there's not, if this is not going to be a thing that I'm going to get promoted out of now, I really need to be under, I need to, I need to be aware that what my timeline is, what my progression is from here. And I was told, you know, hey, you know, we'll come back six months and then we'll, We'll talk again and see see where we're at. So I let the six months pass, and I I checked back in, and it, we were kind of in the same spot. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Again, I've been promoted pretty regularly in my career. I've yeah. changed roles, responsibilities, and I'm making good money. I, I'm making enough money to support a family and a three in a medium cost of living city, and we live comfortably. So not urgent. But the one thing I made pretty clear was is that. I I need to know what the next thing is though. I want to I want I want to work towards a promotion to the next level of whatever at all times. I want to know that from my position there is a next position at least at this stage of my career. There is a next position because I'm not at a position where I want to be terminal in my career. I don't want to be in the spot that's my final spot. I want to know that there's a next level that I can get promoted to that's being thought about, contemplated. And I was like, "Hey, I really want to know what that is. And the answer wasn't there at that time. But the, the commitment was made to, to think about that and what that would look like for me. And right around that same time is whenever I got a little bit more aggressive with applying for other jobs. And because I, I was like, okay, cool. This, is, this conversation has some momentum. This is a good time. Because we were going through a lot, there are a lot of other. There's a lot of outside noise that was influencing why it was protracted, and none of that was anybody's fault. That all of that, the reason why it was delayed was, in my opinion, reasonable. That there's nothing wrong with why it got delayed. We had people. There's a lot of transition, other transitions beyond me going on, and I didn't want to monopolize the situation. So it's not. I I didn't push the button because I didn't feel like I had to, and I didn't feel like it would have been appropriate for me to you know really push up against that wall. Right. But, you know, I made it clear that, hey, I, I do want to know what's next. And I and I want to know what the next, if, if there's a job classification that I can get promoted to next, what that title is, what the description is. I want to see that description so I can work towards achieving that. So that that way, I can, then you and I can go hat in hand to, to the powers that be and say, hey, Daniel has gotten from here to here. We're ready to promote him here. And so that was, that was really what I, I, I put in play put into place a few months ago and 
you know, a month or so passes, I, I get this offer. And then I'll be honest, the, the way that that conversation went is, is it just, I didn't, I could have then took, taken that and let my let current employer know that I was doing that, but I, I, I still didn't know how I felt about this other company. I did this other offer, this other team. I just didn't know how I felt about it. And I, I, I did not want, um, to be in a situation where I was starting that conversation. I, I just had some shaky transitions in the past before and mm -hmm. where, where my feelings and other people's feelings had gotten at least in my view hurt, but turns out in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a big deal. I just didn't want to upset the apple cart mood unless I really knew that I was going to upset the apple cart mood. All right. And then. I got to the point where I, you know, I got an offer and I was really pleased with the offer. And I'll be honest, I got to the point where I, I, I again, yeah, negotiated around PTO and, and that kind of stuff. But I got to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this offer. And I, I got myself at that point, I convinced myself that I was going to leave. And at that point there were, there really wasn't anything that Zachary was going to do that they could offer. They would get me to stay or. So at that point, I, I didn't give them a chance to counter actually, which is, and I did it out of respect for the time of the people involved, because I didn't want to be in a situation where they gave me a counter. And the reality is, is that Zachary could have, and probably would have given me a counter that would have been good enough for me to stay in terms of role, title, responsibilities. It would have taken a lot of people, a lot of energy to make that happen. And even then I probably still would have left. Yeah. And I just didn't want, I, I, these are the people that would have been involved in making that happen for me. I respect them. I care about them. I care about their time. I know they have a lot of other things going on right now. I did not want to be the person that exercised them and then left anyways. I feel like that would have just made the break even harder than it already was. And I know that a lot of people are like, well, at least give your employer the opportunity to counter. And I, I get it. And that, in many instances, I think that is the respectful thing to do if you really would like to stay. And for like, n there's like 90 out of 100 reasons in my body why I want to stay. I love that. I cried when they wrote my two week notice. But I had gotten to the point where I was, I had made it up in my mind that I was going to go. And I didn't want to put myself in a situation where it made that process even harder for myself and other people. So right. I didn't ask for a return offer. I, um, my boss even said, hey, so what if we were to match? He asked me this. He said, this is a great question. And I'm so, I think it's so thoughtful for him to ask it. And he explained why he asked it afterwards. He's like, what if we were to match? Would you still go? And I said, I love it here. And I love the people I work with. But yeah, I, I, I'd still go. And he said, well, that is the right decision for you. And, yeah. and, and uh, I'm really happy for it. And, and, and that was, that's what I needed to hear in that moment. And uh, I was so anxious, nervous about what it would be like to go in to give my notice. And that was just such a calming, settling conversation. And I'm really grateful that right. I lost it. Well, that's good. And I mean, I think that's indicative that you work with a good team. Yeah. Right. Great. Team. So amazing. Team. Um, maybe a, a a bad boss or or poor employer they would have said well it doesn't really fit our timeline you leaving right now so you know we're going to make this process harder for you or we're going to do things that are going to slow you down as opposed to saying hey he's making it a decision for himself yeah it's it's a good step in the right direction or it's a step on his path to continue his career growth and it's what's best for him so yeah. we're going to support him yeah. yeah and sometimes you don't you don't always get that so it's good. It's good that you did. I'm miscommunicating. I just made a pilot, then they threw me on the stations. Now I'm not complaining. Now I'm not complaining. My thoughts get complicated. I cannot explain the lameness. Never losing focus because I ain't chasing payments. Still playing in the basin while I'm working on arrangements. They heard the kid in 50 countries. Thank God that's amazing. But I'd rather think Spotify. They put me on the stations.